Stop that. Close the window. All right. We're live. Let's get into why the days of the all-in-one are over. Today, I've got a special guest, Howard Tager, and G from Wailopo, and of course, Dan Corco from Follow Up Boss. He's even wearing his hat. Dude, are we all wearing swag from our, our respective companies? It's crazy. I think hey, so. G, what kind of shirt are you wearing? Did you not get the memo? Oh, there you go. I okay. got a Wailopo shirt. Don't worry. And then, Dan, you've got the Follow Up Boss swag? Yeah, I got the shirt as well. I love it, dude. Howard, you and I are missing, I'm missing a t-shirt and you're missing a hat. And gee, there's no hat, but I've got your background. Yeah, I don't, we've established that you look really good in those flat, what do they call them? Flat back hats? Flat bill. Like, flat bill. I look ridiculous. I'll, <laughs> get, you, I'll get you a rounded one. Look, look at the follow-up like boss one. Golfers, Dan's got it yeah, down. Old man. I, I do old man style. I can't, I don't look like old man style. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Appreciate everybody on the webinar side of this and the Facebook side of this. Do me a favor and let us know what city and state or country you're from. I know earlier on when we were on the webinar, we had a lot of people from Portugal, some from Australia, South Africa, and of course, Canada. So let us know what city and state you're from and country. And we'll just wish that we were in part of those cities and states and countries as well. And to, to take it off, Howard, I wanted to ask you a question to get this going because you created or you were part founder in Tiger Lead a while back ago. What was it? 2006? Was that 2007. when? It was? Beginning of 2007. Beginning of 2007. And at that time, that was an all in one, right? You guys had everything in one place. But now we're seeing a trend of all of that shifting out. Can you talk about how it started and why the trend is now shifting out of that? Okay, great, great question. So I think first we have to define what is an all-in-one because the topic is the days of the all-in-one are over, but a lot of people are probably like, what the heck is an all-in-one? So, you know, the all-in-one, you know, we really kind of put it on the map in the beginning of 2007 with Tiger Lead where we developed this all-in-one system where we said, we're going to create your website and your website at the time was just very special purpose. It was really just a place to search for homes. It had your, like, your brand on it, but there really wasn't like a lot else to the website. It was very much a place to search for homes. So we established that. Then we advertised that on Google, right? It was all Google pay-per-click back then. It was prior to the boom in social media. And we did pay-per-click advertising, advertised that, got consumers onto that home search site. They registered at astronomically high rates. They started searching. Well, now they're searching. And we needed a place to store all of that information. What homes were they looking at? When did they log in? Uh, what homes did they save to their favorites? All this stuff, right? And at the time, we had no choice but to build our own what I call sales cycle CRM, which means a, a customer relationship management software that just logged all of that stuff. So real time, our real estate agent clients could log in and see the leads that have just come in and what they have just done and they can communicate with them. It was like the very beginning of what I call now like the, the CRM nuclear arms race of functionality. But there were no other CRMs in the real estate space that we could plug and play with. So we didn't have a choice, we had to build it. So we we're doing like three different things, if you think about it. We're, we're, we're wiring up the IDX data feed from the local MLS, powering the home search website, that's one thing, powering the home search website, we are doing the marketing, at the time it was Google, and then we got the CRM, all right? But that was 2007, right? So that's over the beginning of 2007, so that's, 13 and a half years ago. So it's almost a decade and a half, right? And it was super successful. It was like a new thing. It was amazing. And then all of a sudden there were lots of companies coming in saying, Ooh, look at, look at how successful Tiger Lead is. We're going to do that. Right? So it spawned the age of Tiger Lead clones. And there were some really amazing companies that came along and took it to the next level. And again, they were these all in ones, right? Um, and a lot of them, like I could like reel off a big list. Okay. And one of the reasons is we just, we, at the time we just refused to oversell markets, 
Like we just like, okay, once we have a certain number of clients we're doing digital marketing for, like we're not going to keep taking on clients who are competing with our other clients. So it created this big opportunity for all these other companies. But again, a decade and a half ago. And now fast forward to 2020, going to 2021, and there are actually great single purpose CRMs like Follow Up Boss, who we're going to talk about today, right? And Follow Up Boss and their huge staff of engineers only focus on what I call the CRM wars, right? And Wilopo, we only focus on the the website, the home search, right? We've wired up every, you know, home search across the country and then the digital marketing, right? So the creating, the creation of buyer and seller opportunities for our clients, the remarketing, which means the bringing them back all the time, AI conversations, which means starting conversations, like basically the amount of things we do now on the digital marketing side, think about it, Tristan, it's really grown from 2007. 2007 was like, oh, pay-per-click, right? That was it, right? Now- There are a lot of choices, right? So it makes sense. Pay-per-click, social media, Facebook, Instagram, dynamic remarketing, dynamic listing alerts, Raya conversations, dig dynamic video ads. Like it's a huge thing. We're in that nuclear arms race on the digital marketing side. And thank God that G and I don't have to worry about the CRM wars, <laughs> right? You think- do you think that, I mean, as we progress into this whole new generation of being super strong on the marketing side, super strong on the CRM side, as two different entities or vendors, do you think that benefits the real estate agents more so that stronger products come out because you're so focused on your lane or, or does that not work? Yes. If you, if you want, like the way we look at the world is you know, there are still all in ones, right? But the problem is, is that they have to worry about keeping up with Dan, with the, like Dan's team, like every single week, we're like, oh my God, like you should see what they just, they're, they're, they just <laughs> like, like it's crazy cool, right? That's so they true. gotta worry about that. But then they also gotta worry about what G's doing in the lab, which is nuts on the digital marketing side. And you know what they're doing? I'll use a World War II analogy. They're fighting on the Western front and they're fighting on the Eastern front, right? Germany lost the war, right? It was one thing when they were fighting on one front. When you got to fight on both fronts, you, it's a problem. You can't keep up, right? And it's just, a, it's, so, so, so I think they end up being sort of average, right? They do everything. We're, we want to do everything. We're going to host the site. We want to do the, we want to have the, like, when's the last time these guys updated their home search experience? Like, we obsess about the home search. We're always updating the home search experience because it's where you capture consumers. It's how you bring them back. So it's just so hard. Like how does a company obsess about home search, obsess about digital marketing, obsess about AI, obsess about all the cool stuff that Dan's doing with the CRM? Like, how do you do that? And so I think the other analogy is how we run our own business. We have a best of breed financial software. But I don't go to my, I don't go to NetSuite by Oracle to do my digital marketing, right? I don't, you know, like we, we have Zendesk, right? And we've got NetSuite and we've got, and it goes like co-assemble. Like we're going to the best of breed for all these different software as service providers. The key thing is, and this is what we're going to talk about. I'm going to stop talking and talk too much. And we'll move on from the end <laughs> well, I have, I have questions. I have like backed up questions. Is, here's the key thing, right? If they sit on their lonely islands, they don't talk to each other, then it doesn't work. All right. So, so the two way we call API, which means that we're always sending Dan data. Dan's always sending us data, which benefits the real estate agent. Now okay. they got the best of both worlds. They have this seamless system and they know that we've got their backs being on the cutting edge of digital marketing. Dan's got their backs being on the cutting edge of the CRM, but we've got to have this elegant integration seamless for the, for our client. And if we can do that, then you get the benefit of the on one with the benefit of the special of the specialists. Okay. So, uh, so help me out here because you, you, or we're all in this world and we kind of see it from different angles, but we're seeing the same thing happening all throughout. So when you're looking at an all-in-one right now and you've seen a few come out of nowhere too, like 
for instance, Keller Williams is now an all-in-one, right? They've got command. They're saying, we're going to be an all-in-one type of thing where we offer everything. Um, where do you see the challenge for the, the new all-in-ones that are trying to gain ground? What are you seeing as the biggest challenge for those? I, I mean, look, candidly, you know, Dan and G should chime in. I, just one man's opinion. I don't see, honestly, the, I don't see a lot of new all-in-ones. I saw, I, like, that's really died down. It was like every week there was another all-in-one, right? And, um, you know, we, we talked to the folks at Command. I don't, I don't think that they're really necessarily like on the top of everything we do in the digital marketing, remarketing, AI, like sure. all that, right? Yeah. So, so I think we have to be careful on how, again, we define, right, the all-in-one, right? I think it's they, they're producing like an ever-growing sort of CRM, right? Mm -hmm. with a lot of functionality. Where does it stop? But again, you know, the, I'm just very biased, man. I think that the essence of the partnership that we have with our clients is we enable our clients to focus on the overwhelming job that they have to grow their teams and their brokerages. Okay. And my clients don't want to become CRM companies and they don't want to become digital marketing companies. They want to have great partners they can rely on. Got it. So we're Got not it. a big fan of brokerages that want to or claim to become tech companies or tech companies that reverse engineer and want to become brokerages when we see that, right? Okay. Got it. Yep. That, yeah. I do so, see that. Yeah. I think it's just really what I see is that, you know, there are some dinosaur all-in-ones that are hanging on from a decade ago. Yeah. And they've that. got some great, they've got some great stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. There's still some great stuff there. Right. And they still have some happy clients, but at some point, right, you, you can't win that two front war. You really got to choose because it's so, mm. technology is going so fast, right? Yeah, that's very true. Are you going to keep up with all of yeah. it? I see that happening because, you know, we're exposed to all of the, all yeah. the vendors out for, for real estate, right? And some outside, but G in, in the same thing that Howard mm -hmm. is talking about or Dan, how, how big of how important as is how important are apis as to the next evolution of the crm and the marketing platform how how important is it to to this yeah well let me let me start and i i, I think you know here's how i answer that question you know and, and also your answer your last question i i think that the modern platforms that could be interpreted as all in one. And, and when, when Howard and I look at all in one universe, you know, we define it as digital marketing, home search technology, and CRM tech, right? Those are the three core stacks of an all in one platform. I think that, you know, the difference between today's modern take on all in ones, because there are providers, like, for instance, um, <clears throat> Chime that has all of those, right? But, you know, what, what they focus on is data portability, right? The concept that as a consumer, if you are taking data and putting it into an all-in-one platform and you're not able to take that data out any time or interact with other platforms, then you create a lock-in into that platform, right? The problem with lock-in <clears throat> is that there's less of an incentive for the, the company that has lock-in to improve their system to take it to the next level, right? Because they already have all of your data. If you want to leave, you're going to have to leave a large portion of their data behind. The Y local philosophy and the follow boss philosophy is that we're going to mutually share all of the data for our clients back and forth. And we're going to earn your business, not based on data lock-in, because if you leave us, you're going to lose so much data, but because we're going to compete against features and ROI, right? And I think that's what the modern take on platforms like Dan and, and you know, on follow up us and Y Lopo are, we're looking at it as we want to give consumers choice. We don't want to create lock-in, right? And that choice comes from you using the best of breed technologies across the board. Now to enable the use of best of breed technologies, you have to have data portability. You have to be able to share data. And what I'd say about follow up us versus you know, and this is just established fact, everyone knows, knows this, they are by far the most open platform that's out there, right? That's why 
you know, every company when they first integrate with CRM, follow bosses first. They were our first integration, right? And, and as a result of that, you're able to push data in via API, you're able to pull data out via API, and it's, it's that two-way portability of data that allows our clients to have so much choice. They can leave YLOPO anytime and still have their follow boss CRM. They can leave follow up boss and still have the YLOPO system. So on both sides, our interests are aligned with the consumer that we have to deliver the maximum value, right? And I think Dan's gonna show you some examples of this in follow boss. It's not just about YLOPO, right? It's about YLOPO going to follow up boss for you, Tristan, connecting to agentology slash verse, connecting into conversion monster, connecting into like a million other tech platforms that you use because you're a madman. But all of those things work in concert together because it's in it's all involved in a system that is open. And I think that's the fundamental difference between us and the all-in-ones. We're saying, we're not gonna keep you prisoner in the platform that we've built, which we're going to incrementally improve because there's no urgency in our part. We've captured all of your data. We're on a mad dash every single day to provide value because we know if we don't do that, you can leave us anytime. And I think philosophically that is alignment with the consumer yeah to be i mean to be really clear and gene's really eloquently said it but to be really clear this is about freedom and not being a prisoner and the all-in-ones were really good right we were there at, back in the old tiger league days really good at holding you prisoner i i, I mean i just how many times i talked to the head of a giant team or independent brokers like oh we really want to get off that platform like the marketing just sucks but my god i got 50 agents on and i i don't yeah. want to retrain them and like ah oh, i'm like really stuck eventually they move right because it's just too painful but what we're seeing is you know if for example you've got ylopo and you've got follow boss and at some point you're like ah those ylopo guys like i found this other great marketing so source but they love follow boss no problem that real estate team will not miss a beat. They will stay in follow boss. They'll kick my love to the curb. They go with XYZ marketing company or the opposite. Let's say they're loving their Y Lopo. They're on, you know, XYZ CRM. They're like, you know what? I really want to move over to follow boss. They can stick with us, move over to follow boss. We're not going to miss a beat. So we've given the freedom, the autonomy and the power, the leverage to the agent, small, medium, large team, or independent brokerage. And at any time, they can kick us to the curb, they can kick follow us to the curb. And it, it's, they're not gonna lose any data. It's their data. They've spent the money. It's their buyers, it's their sellers, right? And that's why I get concerned about some of these other players out there. I don't want the real estate teams to lose control of the consumer data that's really theirs. It's their property. All right, so Dan, I have a question for you with that. With companies like YLOPO that are the marketing platform for, for teams like mine, right, in brokerages yep. like mine, how is it that they integrate into, into a CRM like yours? Because you guys are, you guys have the niche of just purely a CRM, but it's, it's very powerful. So can we talk a little bit about the workflow and how the integrations look so that people can understand why focusing on just your niche here is valuable to them? Yeah, sure. So yeah, the guys already touched on it a lot, but like there's just so many things to do within the CRM world and there's so many things to do within the digital marketing world. And you can't, if you're trying to do all of them in both worlds, it, it, it really is such a challenge. And you mentioned a bit like, you know, these big franchises are building technology now. Um, part of the challenge is though, like you need real specialists at these different things. So like, you know, G I was talking to G the other day and he's telling me like things about the data to send to Facebook. And I'm just like, wow, I never even thought of that, you know? And it's like, it's, so they're doing these things which are super, super like specialization, right? I guess like if you, you think of like maybe building a, a piece of software or digital marketing as like baking a cake, it feels like what some companies are trying to do is say like, let's get 300 bakers. And by doing that, we're gonna be able to like build the best cake as fast as possible. But the reality is, right, like you just can't throw more engineers at some of these problems. You need deep domain expertise. And that's where like, you know, the YLOPO guys have been in the 
real estate ad tech game for like 15 years, right? So yeah. they, they know it inside and out. They know the follow-up, they know the conversion, they know the problem teams have. Um, and so we're focused on all of that, except on the CRM side. So, you know, initially, again, like maybe 10 years ago when you had like a Tiger Leads, maybe it was enough that you just had a task in your CRM. Like, oh, I've got an appointment with this person. I've just got a task here that says like, go an appointment, you know? But now like that's just outdated basically. Like, so if that's all you have, now what you need to have is like, like we have an our system and other systems have this as well, but you know, not all of the all in ones as an example is like mm -hmm. two way syncs with, with tools everyone's using like Google calendar, um, Google email. And so an appointment is a real appointment in your calendar that's put there and synced. And it's just making the real estate agent's life like, you know, easier basically. Right. And so we have to build all those integrations. We have to one, integrate with all the new systems and changes like with Zillow Flex and Realtor.com up city, but then allow like, yeah, companies that are innovating like Ylopo on the IDX website side to send us all that data and get all that data as well. Yeah. Um, but then there's all the, you know, again, all the workflow things like Google email, um, you know, the, some of the systems you're using like for us and so on. So, yeah, well, I, I have something to add. You see, Tristan, you see new tech all the time. Yeah. Like, you don't the first to see new tech, right? That's your job. Yeah. And so as we stand here today, I always love to say, as we stand here today, we don't know the really cool company that's coming out six months from now with something that the all-in-ones are not going to be able to integrate with yeah. because they're closed, right? Dan will be integrating with them in two seconds flat because he's invested in that integration technology. G will integrate with them in two seconds flat because we've invested in our own integration technology. So that's the other cool thing, which is, is our clients don't have to worry about the next hot thing that comes that moves the needle for them. If you have working with your already working with the company is totally open, totally open architecture. It's okay. We'll be able to plug and play. Yeah, I think one thing that that we're not bringing up, we're not bringing up names here, but look, as lab code agents, it's important for for me to speak to that too because there are some big companies out there that have made it pretty difficult for for us to integrate with other companies right and so like you know i was with commissions inc and for years i pushed them to to merge with with companies like ylopo and open up and i, I never let go of follow up boss dan i stayed with you forever so you know <laughs> uh, and i always use that i always use follow up boss but i also wanted i wanted ylopo to, to merge into into sync into commissions inc and it was like butting heads because they're an all-in-one and they're very protective of their what, what they would consider their tribe and their sphere right and it was almost like they were pushing people away that they didn't want to include companies like Wilo, but it was hard and so you find that same mentality and i'm bringing that up to just so you understand those people that are listening in there's almost like a different mentality when it comes to the all-in-ones versus the the niche products like Howard, you've got the marketing arm, and Dan, you've got the CRM, right? You guys have to be open and allow other people to come in so that you can help us grow. And I don't think that's talked enough about because I see it firsthand when I call companies. I'm like, wow, that's that's terrible for the consumer, right? So that yeah. that's important to bring up. Well, I would say you know I would say that um, fifty percent roughly of the all-in-ones have dug in their heels and said, no, close system. We want you prisoner. We're not playing well with anyone else, right? Unless it's completely something we just don't do. And then it's still kind of the, you know, the integration kind of sucks, right? 50% of the all-in-ones have said, no, we get it. Like we understand this is the future. And they've created CRM only versions of you know, of their, of their platform because they get it right. And they understand now some are, you know, have better integration tech than, than others, but they at least get it. They're at least really open to it. Right. And what's cool about working, you know, and that's, that's cool to work with those guys. Like we like working with those guys. Um, but like, we love working with follow up boss because like, we know, like they're not in our lane. We're not in their lane yet. Our two lanes, it's one seamless road. And that's what I, I really want Dan and G to kind of actually show some visuals of possible. Yeah, can you can you yeah. guys show us some visuals, please? Because I, I want to see. Sure. Dan, I, I want to see or G, either one. I want to see how the process because 
I've been I've been with with you guys almost from the very beginning, right? With both, actually both of you, well, almost the very beginning, and I, I've seen the companies grow, and I, I want to just show the process of when the lead comes through into how it gets categorized and how we contact them, and then just the power of it working together. Cool, yeah. I'll, I'll, let's go through this one, this in your account, Tristan. Cool. Um, I just want to say like quickly on the business model thing, because you guys are just talking a lot about that. I think it's really hard. Like when you talk about this all-in-one that's competing for your marketing dollars, right? And they've got all these clients and their business depends on keeping those clients marketing dollars, basically. So it's very hard for them to say, great, I want to welcome in Wailopo to the family and then, you know, have them move their marketing spend over because they're seeing like it's more effective over here, right? And so that's where it's like, there's this fundamental like business challenge for some of those companies to like, the business model just doesn't support being open. You know, it's like, even if they want to improve things, like they sort of have to make this really hard trade off of like, do what's best for their customers and lose revenue or, you know, sort of, um, yeah, it's just stay in that closed ecosystem. So, um, but yeah, let's jump into this one. Uh, I don't know, gee, if you want to talk through it, but like, there's a lot going on here. Uh, so this is, this is a wide loop lead that the, the guys generated for them. I love it. All right, G, you want to take this one? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to zoom in just a little bit? G's getting old. <laughs> yeah. see I'm joking with you, G. I'm just joking. I know, I know. All right. Okay, awesome. Go. Yeah, so so this is a lead that came in. I, I, I think this is a lead that really illustrates, again, Tristan, you're a madman, but it really illustrates how a lot of different technologies converge to help you qualify a lead and turn that into an opportunity, right? So this is a lead that came into your system from Google AdWords uh, five days ago. So as soon as the lead comes in, we send all the contact information over to Dan uh, in follow up boss. We, we, we uh, create an initial registration event. We send that over. That lead follows your lead routing rules, right? And gets assigned to an agent. Okay. So at this point that the lead comes in, you are, you know, uh, immediately having another technology platform, which has nothing to do with Follow Boss or Wailopo called Verse, communicating with the lead, right? So uh, now you've got Wailopo, you've got Follow Up Boss, and you've got Verse, three different tech platforms that are all working together on that same lead because we all are working in an open way, right? So this lead then goes ahead and answers a couple of questions. They say that they're looking for the right property and their time frame is within 90 days. Fantastic. This is already looking like a great lead, right? Yep. It then further requests information on a property. That's why you see a property inquiry right here that they're looking for, you know, 1909 Hazelnut Court, right? And yep. so as soon as that action happens, which is happening on the Wailopo IDX website, we say, oh, wait a minute. This is a really important lead. We need to let Tristan know, and all of Tristan's network of partners know that this is a lead that they need to talk to right away. So we call that a priority notification, right? So we send a priority notification. Hey, this person requested a showing of this address. You better call that person, right? Now, this is where another technology that Tristan uses comes into play called Conversion Monster, right? Because as soon as we send that priority alert, which by the way, we also send to Conversion Monster, so they know about it as well. Conversion Monster is a, another ISA platform that will work the lead similar to what Versus do it, right? So you've got new lead coming in from Wailopo. Initially, it is immediately engaged by Verse. It is all happening on Follow Up Boss. We find a priority notification that says, hey, this person needs to be called right away because they requested a showing. Conversion Monster then comes in to work the lead alongside, uh, you know, Verse, right? Let's scroll up. Let's see what happens. So, so you know, all of these messages that you're seeing back and forth here is with the Verse platform and with the Conversion Monster platform. They're texting the lead. They're calling the lead and getting a ton of information, right? Like this lead texted, hey, they're looking for a 3,000 square foot lot you know, open floor plan. They're looking for a million to a 1.6 million, multi-million dollar lead right here, right? And all of these conversations are logged inside Follow Boss 
so that you know anyone can, can any assigned agent is able to see what is going on right so this is the power of the open platform you've got four different technologies all working together on the same lead with the goal of converting that lead right now what's really interesting about this lead and this is where you know tristan i think your madman ways pays off is is there a way to unblur that Check out what happens with this lead, right? So, so verse agentology, right? And, and this happens, guys. We're just using one example here. I've seen this go the other way as well all the time, right? Verse talked to this lead, and because of the answers that were provided, they concluded that this lead was not qualified, right? And probably because this person said, I am working with an agent right now, right? And so, you know, Verse sent a message to Tristan saying, hey, you don't need to talk to this person because they are already have an agent, right? Let's scroll up a little bit. Conversion Monster, again, also working the same lead at the same time, getting all the information. They talk to this person and they find out, wait a minute, she's a cash buyer. She's going to go view homes on, on Tuesday with a realtor, but she has not signed any forms with a realtor and she is open to other realtors and this is a person that Tristan should be connecting with, right? So if Tristan hadn't used four different technologies all converging together on that lead, he would not have an opportunity at this cash buyer one to $1.6 million lead, right? Now, now, as this lead comes in, this is all happening three days ago, right? Let's scroll up a little more. With this lead, uh, you know, two days later, they come back and they look for even more properties. Right? So all of this history is being captured on this lead. And what we're doing is as the Ylopo system is working this lead, we're sending tasks, we're sending notes, we're sending text, a text to the assigned agent, right? So not only is Verse, Conversion Monster, Ylopo working the lead, because of everything going to the system and us being able to have a two-way directional, two, two directional API, we know this lead is assigned to Valerie, so we're contacting Valerie all the time to talk to this person as well, right? So, so I think this is a really illustrative lead of how multiple different technologies that are all best of breed can be working one opportunity at the same time to deliver the best possible results. Any other thoughts, gentlemen, on this? Dude, I love how you broke that down. It's like play by play. Right, I felt like I was watching ESPN for real estate agents. <laughs> well, well, Dan, do you do you want to show them that Rock Berry lead? Because I think I think that illustrates, yep. you know, some some other stuff. Oh, there's a quick question actually that I wanted to address yep. too. This is probably going to be answered by Howard, but who knows? Here we go. Uh, Howard, he's yeah. going to go at you. I got it. I got All this right. question. I already right. seen. It. Go ahead. You already saw it. Yeah, answer. I love this All question. right, so Harold is asking, just so everybody knows, inventory shortage and buyer leads, uh, that's the question. Does it make sense to invest in buyer lead generation with so much inventory shortage? Got it. Okay, so I can handle this. This would be a whole separate topic we should do, Tristan. I know, dude. I know. <laughs> I can go off on I this. Can you had it. Let me give you like two that come right to the top of the mind, okay? First off, okay. If I want to go, right, if, and and I'm like, okay, I'm out of here, man. I'm, I'm selling my home, right? And I'm going to go somewhere else, okay? It's a couple of things I got to do. First off, I got to figure out how much equity I got in my house, right? And second, I got to go look where I'm buying to see what homes I can, you know, buy for that price range, right? So the first time a seller raises their hand, everyone calls them a buyer lead, and I'm tired of it, man. Like 50% of them are living in a home. <laughs> and before they ever think about who's gonna list their home, they're online like looking at what they can possibly go into, right? No one just like lists their home and then like then tries to figure out where they're going. They try to figure out where they're going first and then they list their home. So if you think that somebody searching for homes is just a buyer, you're in the wrong business, okay? Because we know for a fact, and matter of fact, you know, we love for our, for our clients, we target homeowners, which is what we can do on social media lead gen. We can target homeowners, right? Who are looking at other homes. So that's number one. Number two, 
Tristan, you're an agent, right? You go into a listing presentation and you're like, I'm going to put your home on the MLS and we'll see who calls me, right? Or <laughs> Tristan, goes into, Tristan goes into the into the listing and says, yep, of course, we're going to put on the MLS like everyone else, right? But I want to show you, take whips open his laptop. I want to show you, I've got 742 buyers that are already looking in this neighborhood. Who's the person going to list with? Right? Good, of course. You better have that database. Yeah. <laughs> and you better have that follow-up boss screen open so you can do, Dan could probably show us right now as I'm talking, literally show how we can sort on, bam, he's already got the buyers in that neighborhood. Guess what? Now you get listings. So a healthy, balanced business going forward is buyers and sellers, right? You get the listing, you get more buyers, you get more buyers, then the people are going to want to list with you, right? So it all works together. Did I answer the question? You did. All uh, right. Sorry, I, I, did. I got worked up. Dude, that was good because I think you're not even bringing up the fact that when you, that, remember that? This massive database and then how much it's worth based on how many people you have in your database, right? I think that that just shows the value of growing the amount of people that you have in your database and retargeting them. So um, that that's a whole different webinar that we can do, buddy. What am I looking at right now, Dan? When I'm selling my home, an agent comes in, like I know they're just going to throw the house in the MLS, the average agent, right? But when Tristan comes into my house, it's like, dude, I've already got a thousand people. He can just say I got a thousand people looking, looking at your neighborhood, but I don't believe him. And then he opens up his follow up boss here. I mean, he's like, here they are. Oh, here's one looking right now, literally online right now, looking at looking in your neighborhood. I'm like, oh my God, like that's my guy, right? Yeah, I'm gonna email all these people about your house if we list, right? Like I'm already been working these buyers. I mean, that's, that's awesome. So Dude, I think you, we have one. Can either one of you show, oh, uh, Dan, after you show me this, gee, is there any way that you can show me one good integration that I love, whereas, you, you go to the back end and you pull up the seller report to see how many people are in follow up boss that match that property value. So people can instantly see how many people I need to call if I'm going to list this home. Say, hey, look, I've got a list right here for your home already. Cool. Yeah, you yeah I can definitely you? show you that. Uh, it's going to take me a little time to uh, set up. So, uh, all right. Yeah, I'll might, uh, might also just want to find a screen. Let's do the too. play by me. I'll show, um, so one other thing that's new for us that, that I can show and like just kind of goes into this, like what we're talking, topic of what we're talking about. I actually can just see this, this lead just came back to the site. So that just popped in there a few seconds ago. Um, but on the right hand side here, you can see like a little call action section. So mm -hmm. what this is, is called an embedded app. So instead of us just like talking via API to call action, um, what this is, is actually call action designed everything you see here. So they actually built this, like this wasn't built by follow up bus engineers. Um, so what that does is that allows companies like call action, my Lopo, we're working with, you know, a couple of others, AM cards to say like, Hey, like we want to make this really easy for agents to do things in our app, but we don't want to have them have to go and log in to call action. Right. Cause like getting your agents to do that is just a pain, right? They're already busy enough. So now they can just uh, select and do things here, add the contact to drips, all that kind of thing directly from follow up boss. So again, it's just like a much better experience for the agent. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, we're going to be working on one of those with Ylopo as well. But again, it's like, this is just sort of like the power of again, taking like this approach of being open instead of saying like, no, we actually need to build everything, control everything. Like this is totally up to our customers. If they want to have this app, they can add it. If they don't want to have it, they can get rid of it. You know, it's, it's, it's up to you. Yeah. It, it's this type of stuff that really, you know, kind of makes follow up boss a step above on being the open part. Right. I mean, we're able to directly integrate in, to, into their app in a way that we, we just can't in other platforms. So it's fantastic. Uh, okay. Kristen, what should we do first? Should we walk through this, this new lead or do you want to, do you want to see the seller report? I, well, I think both illustrate. Let's walk through the new lead and then let's show, show me the report. Okay, awesome. Let's do it. So this is an AdWords lead, I believe, or a Facebook lead, actually, that came in registered nine days ago. 
right? Um, this league came in and, you know, first thing that happens is, <laughs> again, multiple different technologies working the lead at the same time, right? If you see the third note that's uh, uh, on the bottom right there, text automation messages, right? That is a note that we've sent through to the lead that is from call action, right? So, so Barry has call action integrated into uh, his follow boss platform. That platform is texting the lead, right? At the same time, if you look at the very top, there's a note that says AI message sent to lead. How can we help? Are you still looking to buy a home soon or just sell? Immediately, that's Ylopo, right? So Ylopo is texting the lead as well in conjunction to Barry texting lead with call action. And guess what? The lead responded first to the Ylopo text. It could have easily responded to the call action text, but it decided to respond to the Ylopo text. And this is what we see over and over again, right? When you communicate with leads, it's better to hit them from a couple of different angles than just to try one thing because you never know who they're going to respond to, and it only makes you look like you have more people working for you than you actually do, right? Because instead of just you emailing or texting them, you've got an entire team. Now, this person replies, they're looking to buy within one to three months, duplex under 250K. Wow, fantastic. Given us a lot of information, right? Yeah. Now, what's great about Ylopo is that we have an automated ISA platform. It's a sophisticated chatbot that will text back and forth with your lead as if they were your ISA, except it's 100% automated, right? So as soon as that person replied, within one to three months duplex under 250K, we gave them a thumbs up and we said, we're happy to help you narrow down on your purchase through these uncertain times. I'd love to get some more info about the property you're looking for. What location are you interested in? right? This consumer then responds back. They're interested in Norfolk, Chesapeake, VB areas only. Now, again, this is a fantastic lead because they've already given you exactly what their time frame for buying, what they want to buy, and the locations they want to buy, right? So what happens next? Well, Barry is going to start attacking these people in a lot of different ways with different technologies, right? You see here call created notes all from C, all all with CM note on there. That's conversion monster, right? <laughs> so Barry has conversion monster now working these leads via phone because they've responded to a text message from Ylopo. We told him about it. At the same time, his agent Monter Monterio is also calling the lead from follow up boss, right? And all of the recordings of that through the follow boss di dialer, all of that recording is on follow up boss. So Barry and his admin can audit the call if they want to, right? A couple of days later, this consumer then requests a showing on the Ylopo website because they're coming back from email listing alerts, they're coming from back from dynamic remarketing. As soon as that happens, we will send them a priority notification, right? Can you scroll up a little bit? There's the priority notification, right? Once again, the concept here is we're giving intelligence to the agent to say, hey, you need to contact this person because something important happened, right? Now, in this situation, that happened six days ago, right? And there's no notes on here associated with the agent calling this person back. Now, the agent probably did, right? Because the agent has been calling these leads. You saw those notes. But they probably just didn't log that call in the system. But what's great about follow -up boss, and this is kind of, you know, the thing with CRMs is you can build a million features, right? But if it doesn't work together perfectly, then those features become more of a nuisance than they are helpful, right? With follow-up boss, one of the things that we really respect about them is they're very thoughtful about product. You know, one of that example is the concept of collaborators, right? So this lead was assigned to Monterio, but there's a backup in case Monterio is not able to respond to the lead. Terry, who is Barry's admin, is also a collaborator on this lead who's getting messaged the same messages as Monterio, right? So she's seeing every priority notification. She's seeing every text message that's being exchanged. She's seeing every conversion monster note. And so she is able to tag Monterio, which is going to ping him on his app that, you know, asking, Barry Jenkins asked me if you have spoken, can we please update status and notes, right? So now there's accountability on what's going on. And, 
the last activity that's come in is five minutes ago, literally five minutes ago, this person returned the site and viewed two more listings. So they're still very engaged in the home buying process, right? So, so you've got follow boss, you've got call action, you've got Ylopo, you've got conversion monster, and you've got the agent and their assistant, six different people and technologies all working together on the lead in one platform. That's the beauty of an open platform and what you're not going to be able to get with, a, with an all-in-one. If you look at this view, you could hit a link, right? Take you to our system, right? Still keeps follow-up us open and you can push a listing to that client, right? You can edit your listing alerts. You can look at what they've just looked at and look at their browsing history, right? You can do all that stuff back and forth really seamlessly. Gee, I have a question for you, which, I, which I'm asking because I think it'd be helpful for the audience which is what would, and maybe it's, it, Dan can answer it as well, but, but, it, but gee, I think you're in a good position to answer it. What would be like a really, really important thing that, cause a lot of people come to us like, oh man, I want my Lopo, right? I'm like, and I'm like, well, what's the me on? I'm on follow boss. I'm like, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you're on follow boss. <laughs> but some people come to us and they're like, you know, and you know me, Tristan, like I don't like to call out any specific names of companies because a lot of people are working really hard, right? That's their livelihood, right? But they come to me and they're on, I'm like, what, what CRM are you on? They're like, I'm on XYZ. And I'll be like, okay, don't waste your time. <laughs> like it's going to be such a bad integration, don't waste your time. Like what are you talking about? I wanna... So gee, what would be a, like a really important example of something that works seamlessly that you can do if you've got Ylopo and follow boss, but has been a problem if you've got Ylopo and one of these big name brands all in ones. Sure, you know, it's, it's a lot of subtle stuff, right? It's a lot of subtle stuff. But let me give you an example of how we work with follow up boss in a really effective way that makes your life easy, right? So as I mentioned before, Ylopo has the concept of an automated ISA, a sophisticated chatbot that's texting back and forth your lead to engage them, but ultimately to qualify them into a real opportunity for you, right? Now, <clears throat> when you're texting back and forth the lead, we are texting that lead from the persona. We are acting as your assistant, right? So we're texting them, we're saying, hey, this is Montario's assistant. I wanna help you with your home search, right? Now, what if you as the agent, because you saw this lead and they were hot and ready to go, you called this person and they, you already had a great conversation with them and, and you already created the relationship. Well, you got to turn off our automated ISA, right? So in a non-integrated platform or integrated platform that is a really bad integration with us, you've got to click a button, go into our back end, click another button to shut off AI, come back, you know, remember these three different steps in order to make that happen, right? In follow a boss, you just change the stage of the lead from active or lead to hot prospect. We know about that immediately because follow a boss sends that to us via API. We shut off our AI, right? So there's a million little examples like that of how why local features integrate into follow a boss features and then follow a boss features are alerting us on what's going on so that we can turn on, off, manipulate, edit all of our technologies and work seamlessly together. So that's, that's a great example of a two-way API, right? We're sending follow boss information that, you know, something's happening, right? And follow boss is sending us information back, right? Saying this thing's happening and it's, there's not to be undersold, right? Because otherwise, if you're on the CRM with WhiteUpo that doesn't have a great integration, then your agents, Tristan, they're going to get really pissed off, right? They're going to be like, oh my God, like the, the AI is communicating with them. Like we never talk, we just talk to them. And now I look <laughs> yeah, like an idiot. That's, that's not yeah. small. That's, a, that's not a small detail. It's a big deal, right? No. Don't yell at us, man. Yell at your all in one because they won't open up. <laughs> but you're not going to have that problem with follow up boss. That's the cool thing. Yeah, and also true. the interesting thing is follow up boss is probably telling them to other systems like Verse or Conversion Monster as well. Like, hey, you guys now need to stop, right? So it's like, yep. like, like you said, there's this whole ecosystem going on where it, behind the scenes, a lot of things are talking to each other and uh, this would be nerdy and technical, but like, you know, we have web hooks and things on our system, which are just the second something happens, like an appointment is booked or a stage has changed, it can tell another system and say, hey, you need to now change how you're treating this lead. All right, so dude, I kind of I, I see the point now that we're all trying to make it's just that 
with the ability to stay in your own lane, like Wailopo and Follow Up Boss, we're able to adapt more as a company because things move and change so quickly. That's a benefit to us real estate agents. And we definitely want to be with, with companies that can change as quick as tech needs to change. So I, I think that's what it comes down to. Gee, do you still have that thing up that I wanted to see? So we can close it out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's There's do it. There's an important question from the audience here, for probably for G. And the question... Oh, here, is it by SEP? If yeah. we have follow-up boss in Wailopo? Yep. That one? All right, yeah. here we go. SEP, first of all, what's up, SEP? Thanks for joining us again. If you have follow-up boss in Wailopo, do you still need agentology, call action, et cetera? Is it worth to spend money to get the rest of these other programs? Look, initially, I would stick with just follow up boss and Wailopo, turn on the Wailopo uh, AI, which is yeah. Raya. Yeah. And if you aren't comfortable with it and you think you need an extra layer to that, then at that point, I would test out either agentology or call action. But initially, I don't think I would do it. I think I'd just leave it where it's at with both of those. All right, G, what do we got here? Awesome. Yeah. So, so <laughs> this is our show and tell time, right? So, you know, um, just like we have an integration where we're pushing data into follow up boss, conversely, we are pulling data from follow up boss into our system as well, right? One demonstration of this technology, what you're looking at here is our Wailopo mission control platform. This as a digital marketing company, we want to provide you guys with a dashboard where you can see everything that's happening from a digital marketing perspective, right? I won't go into the details, but high level, you're able to go in and see every single marketing campaign we're running for you, exactly what the ads look like, exactly where your money's being spent, whether it's on buyers, sellers, remarketing, and you're going to keep us accountable based on the volume of leads we're generating, right? So for Barry, our realtor in residence, the profile I'm looking at, we spent this amount so far, we spent it on buyers, we spent it on remarketing, we spent it on sellers, we generated, you know, 279 leads, we sent 249 of them into your CRM, because th those were the leads that probably weren't renters, and your average cost per lead that hit your CRM is around $3.09 right? So we're giving you all this rich data and there's a bunch of other stuff that can be done. The feature that I want to highlight is what we call our seller report. What this feature does is anytime Tristan wants to go on a listing appointment, right? He's just going to provide the address of that listing and put it into the system. They're, he's going to give us a price band for this particular home. I believe this home was somewhere around 500,000 to 600,000 estimated home price, right? So, you know, whatever you think the range is going to be, it was a five bedroom home and I believe a four ba bath home, right? So then I'm going to just click on generate report and this is going to generate what we call a sell report and it's going to pull live data in from follow up boss. I'm going to show you exactly what type of data we're pulling in in a second here. Uh, yeah, this is going to generate report. a PDF. I use this report probably like four times a week with my team, at least. So it's, it's a pretty powerful report. Processing a lot of data here, mainly because uh, Barry has, uh, oh, I don't know, 120,000 leads in the system. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got one of the larger databases. I thought it was because you were using AOL dial-up for a second. Well, I am in a basement office here, but I am on broadband. So, so this seller report is going to have a lot of different features, right? It's going to show you, hey, here's how many people viewed your, my ad on social media in the last, whatever, 30 days. Here's how many people are actively searching for homes on my website. Here's how many people I'm targeting every day on Facebook. Here's how many listings I'm spending thousands of dollars marketing on. It's going to tell you, do an actual search around the address that you're looking, 10 miles, there's 70,000 people that Facebook has marked likely to move soon, first-time home buyers or recently browsed homes for sale. Guess what? You're going to target as an agent all of these 70,000 people. The average agent that's coming in the door, they're only going to target their 200 friends on Facebook, right? And we actually show live examples of what your advertisement is going to look like. These are similar properties that you marketed before. But I'm going to jump ahead here and show you the integration, right? Because the report, the, the part of the report that 
if done right, I do believe you win every single listing presentation you go into is that we're going to do a data pull out of the follow boss ecosystem. Barry has 87,000 leads in his database, right? Active buyers in his database. Based on the parameters I put in, he has 2,760 active buyers who we think would be actually interested in this property. And, and as proof, here's redacted list of leads as examples of people who are looking to buy. Look, all these people with three to six months, within 90 days, within 90 days, these are hot prospects that are ready to go just looking for the right property, right? So Barry can actually go into that listing presentation and do exactly what Tristan and Howard talked about. Proof is in the pudding. I have actual buyers and a huge database buyers that I'm going to email, text, and reach out to in the follow boss ecosystem, which we have a tool that imports those leads in a follow boss, right? That, that any other agent is not gonna have access to. So, so this is the second way that the two way part of the integration, we're actually going into all of these leads in follow up boss, we're identifying the ones that are interested in this property, we're pulling into our system and we're making them available to the agent to win the listing presentation and then actually sell this home by marketing to all those people. Wow, that's a that's an awesome breakdown, man. Uh, I have a question from the audience. Does Wailopo work in Canada too? Yes, yes it do. does. We have we love our Canadian clients. Perfect. And Dan, Wailopo works in Canada too. Wailopo. I mean, sorry, sure. I'm asking you the same question. <laughs> yeah, well, it does. No, uh, yeah, follow up us does as well. Maybe like 5% of our customers are in Canada. Uh, we actually have a team member up lives up there as well. Uh, so definitely all the phone number technology all still works. So, yep, definitely. Perfect, perfect. Well, guys, that was awesome. I loved seeing that technology stack. And I love going, like I said, like the ESPN play-by-play -play thing. I don't think we've ever done that before, which is pretty cool. I liked it. We should do that again and go in deeper because I don't think we've ever done that. And I like that. I like that. That was pretty sweet. Okay. Dan, anything, awesome. anything awesome. that I missed that you wanted to talk about here? Uh, no, thanks, guys. I mean, we do have a free trial. We don't have any contracts. So, again, it's a bit of a different business model to – you know, uh, it's more of the all-in-one uh, platform. You can just go to followupboss.com uh, slash lab coat. You can get a 14-day free trial. There's also a special one at the moment where you get 50% off your first month. So, yeah, like, just try it out. Um, if we can help you, we'd love to. And, uh, yeah. All right. Howard G. It's also, awesome. it's also important to know that we have no, we have no business, which I love. We have no business relationship with Follow-Up Boss. Um, there's no strategic or business relationship. It's important to know. Um, it's one of the things when I met Dan, you know, a few years ago that I really, really respect about Dan and you'll know, you know, this as well, Tristan, you know, he's just like my technology just will stand on its own. Right. And we, people will use us and value us. And if they don't, we got to get better. Right. But there's no outside influences and we recommend them wholeheartedly because it's of the, of the, amazing consumer experience we don't make a penny whether someone uses follow up boss or xyz crm so yeah just, just to be to be able to know. yeah just to be even clearer like you know just like we don't get paid anything to recommend why lopo as well so it's you, you know because like like you said we don't have business relation we do have business well, relationship cool we have this actually, time you guys, you guys really recently announced a discount which is all passed on to, to the agent or the team leader you guys actually have a pretty aggressive discount if you're on Wailopa, which is really flattering and awesome. All right, guys, one last question. Whoever wants to take this one, Josh Murphy's got a good question. What about for those of us that do not have a database or a big Facebook following? How do we gain people to add to our database? And then we'll wrap it up with that one. So, you know, um, you know, Tristan, we've, we've, talked about the databases forever. And if you don't have a database, you have to start now. And this is a really important point, which is, you know, at some point, and maybe it's gonna take you five years, right? If you don't have anything now, but with a, with a great dedicated plan, and this is definitely another webinar topic, Tristan, how in five years to build a big, database that will become a forever income producing machine. And you can do that 
through lead acquisition, buying leads, right? And we talk about the different types of leads you can buy, social media leads, pay-per-click 2.0 leads, portal leads, different leads, right? And how quickly can you get that database up in five years? Also, lots of free, free ways to get in what I call organic leads as well, right? So you can double the size of your database in a year or five years by getting leads in from all different directions plus a massive acquisition budget, right? And now what we didn't have 10 or 15 years ago with all of this nurture technology, when you build up that database, you've got them forever. It's just, we're gonna stay in front of them, stay in front of them, stay in front of them. When they get hot, ready to buy or sell, boom, you have an opportunity. So that's the, the, the highest level answer, which is you have a database, use the tech, right? You don't have a database, whether you have it or don't have it, you gotta keep building it. You gotta keep building it, you know? So that's it. I agree. I love that. Guys, thanks for being on. That's a great topic, Howard. I think maybe uh, we'll all do that one. That's a, that's a really good one. Five-year plan to, to double your database or massively grow your database. Guys, thanks for being on. G, Dan, Howard, have an Thank awesome you, day. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye.